the ultimate rift build up right here, right now. This is Troy's Rift. It is box stock. It's going to be getting parts from Vitavon, Holmes, Reefs, Castle, Servo AF, and Ot6. All of that is going into that vehicle in this show right here, right now. Let's get to the table. Look at the lineup of parts going on this, guys. Look at this. We have Vitavon B blocks right here. We've got the Ot6 USD stickies right here. Hard to get tires. Got them. We got the front axle, rear axle, uh, lower arms, link set, skid, Holmes Hobbies motor. We got the Castle Mamba XESC. We got a Reese 99 Micro. We got a Servo AF Model A Servo. Vitavon transmission, servo guard, DSM bungee limit right there, uh, knuckles, sway bar, and the two speed set. All of this is going in <laughs> right now. Let's start out by weighing in the box stock rift. I'm going to weigh every part individually. We are coming in without a battery, seven pounds, 4.4 ounces. Now, just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and weigh in mine. Golly. I think it weighs like 100 pounds. Okay, I was a little bit wrong. But it's almost 11 pounds. 10 pounds, 14.6 ounces. This is without battery. So, we're going to see just how much this one right here comes in at. All right. Guys, I've got a lot to do here. I'm going to show you guys the highlights. Um, things that just need to be pointed out. I've already got videos on the front end, the transmission, the rear axle, all this stuff. So basically, I'm going to start out with the easy part. That's going to be the wheels and tires. Um, anything that I see that needs to be shown tech-wise, you're going to see it right here. These bead locks right here, as beautiful as they are, guess what? All these bolts have to come out for the ring. So it takes a little while. That part's done. When you're mounting these tires up, the trick is to make sure that the bead is all the way on the outside of that. That will allow everything to go right in beautifully, just like this. With the bead lock ring set up perfectly like that, they pretty much just simply push right down and you can put the bolts right in. Tires are done. Look at that. That is awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh in the old wheels and tires. They come in at one pound, 13.1 ounces. Get those off of there. Now let's put on the new ones. Two pounds, 15.1 ounces. Now it's time to dig in and you know what? I may as well just pull it all apart. It's all got to come apart anyway, right? I'm going to start with the transmission. That's the most time consuming part of this. Got a lot of work to do. So I'm taking it out now. Here we go right here. Stock transmission. See them gears? nice and dry they were greased these things spin so fast you're just going to sling the grease off of them i don't grease that at all um here is the two speed hopefully i can get all this in here and have it work correctly this time versus you know all the fit i had before so all the modifications i did to this i'm going to go ahead and do them right away to this case the, the shift fork and hopefully get everything in and set the stock transmission with motor comes in at one pound, 4.6 ounces. As I'm getting everything apart and going to be soon putting in the two-speed transmission, if all you're going to be doing is blasting hills and just having a good time, bouncer style and all that, if you're not planning to try to crawl this thing, just stay with the gears you see right here. There's no need for the uh, low gear set. Just not needed. These gears right here in stock form can take this thing over 40 miles per hour on 4S. So yeah, they're pretty darn good. I'm changing out the center diff to a spool. I got the spool in mine and I kind of like it. Um, gets wheelies better and it eliminates the chance of actually having to go back into this transmission because of blown diff gears. These transmission cases are a thing of beauty. <laughs> wow, that is just beautiful. This shaft right here uses no clips, just simply the case keeps everything together, which heck, I guess it will. I mean, it can't exactly come off, can it? So let me show you guys exactly what I've done. I've trimmed off both sides of that. Now you can see that little shoulder is poking out. What I'm doing is I'm maximizing travel within. I have drilled that down and out so that this piece can go all the way in place. I'll show you that in just a second. 
and I've drilled that hole all the way through. Drilling that hole all the way through does leave a path for dirt, but I think we're gonna be okay because I haven't had an issue with mine. I, I did the same thing. So let me show you guys this. You can see right there, everything goes all the way up against the case. I'm maximizing the overall travel available and the same with this down here. This way, I can get all the way full lock to both sides of the gears. I want you guys to see right here, I have full engagement of second gear. Full engagement, and that is all the way down flush to the case. Now, I wanna show you guys, when Arthur made this, he made this to the same dimensions of the factory case. As you can see right there, there is no indention, no way for this to do it. So, this is really an issue on Axial's fault right here. Um, but anyway, we've got that corrected. Hopefully, you guys will see this and help you guys out. This is the low gear right here. Look at this. I gotta have almost all of that. Probably didn't have to trim all of it off, but you can look at this right here. And you can see I've got full engagement of low gear as well. Gotta maximize that travel. I've got all the gears in place. You can see everything is moving. I know I've got full travel on the uh, shifter dog and this right here is going to work out great. I gotta add a little bit of grease to it. Even though most of the grease is gonna fling off because Troy drives like, uh, like me. <laughs> we are now ready to reassemble. Hopefully some of that grease will stay on. Um, a lot of times it just simply flings off. Okay hey guys, got it done. Everything is running smooth. I want to tell you guys that I added two uh, 0.02 millimeter shims to the back and I added about four or five up front. This is to make up for the actual Eclipse. The Eclipse take up space and they keep that gear off the back of the case. So that was the reason for that. I will put a link down in the description. Hopefully I'll remember it. It's where you guys can actually get the uh, shims that I'm using, usually by Kyosho. Well, so let's see how much this transmission here weighs in. It does have the screws at the bottom. So let's see, we are one pound, 10.5 ounces. Now that I've got the transmission done, all I really need out of this are the internals out of the axles. That's it. However, I got to get the weights before, after, and all that stuff. So I'm going to disassemble this so I can get all that and then put the stuff in to the new housings. Stock front axle comes in at 13.1 ounces. Stock rear axle comes in at 9 ounces. The stock skid comes in at 3.4 ounces. The stock links come in at 5.5 ounces. The stock rear arms come in at 1.3 ounces. Vitavon link set weighs in at 4.1 ounces. The Vitavon skid comes in at 7 ounces. Front axle time. Now this is pretty much just a simple bolt in. Uh, should be pretty straightforward. There is one thing I want to show you guys inside. Something to check on yours when you get it brand new out of the box. When you get it, make sure you open up the front end, pull this out, and make sure these bolts are tight. Now me, I'm going to open this up and actually get everything out, make sure it's all good, and put it into an aluminum diff cup. The internals actually look just fine. Now, this is the diff cup that I'm going to be using. So all this is going into here, which should hold this together a little bit better. Here we go. I did pack a little bit of earplug into it. And the reason is I wanted it to be stiffer, but also have some oil left over because the old oil is still in it. Um, I wanted it to be lubricated while this thing mashes around and mixes up, but be a little bit tighter than what it is from this factory. The bare housing weight with a diff cover on it comes in at 4.4 ounces. The Vitavon bare housing comes in at 6.5 ounces. Went in nice. Now all I gotta do is add a little grease, close this up, and then I can just get to the outers. When it comes to the knuckles, there's a couple times I've seen it local. They forget to put the inner bearing in. Now, these are designed to use these stock metal shielded bearings that come with the rift. However, I've got some rubber sealed ones, and those are gonna go in instead. When it comes to putting this bearing into place, if you do it like this, leave it on the axle, leave the outer bearing in place and pull it in like that, you'll get proper alignment and pull the bearing all the way into place. When you're assembling it, you will reuse these pins that came out of the factory axle. And there we have the completed front end. Gotta tell you guys, ting, 
It sure is pretty. <laughs> How much does this weigh? It comes in at 14.1 ounces. Now it's time for the rear axle. And the completed rear axle went together beautifully. We are at 12.2 ounces. So guys, the hard part's done. All I gotta do now is just simply assemble all of this stuff and get the electronics taken care of and put it into the actual chassis. <laughs> it's powered up. Let's see here, we should be neutral. whole lot of second gear right here. Now he's only running a 3S on this, so see the steering here. Looks pretty good. Um, I'm also printing him one of those little one-hand drive adapters as well. So now all I gotta do is get the sway bar on the chassis, get this in the chassis, get the tires and wheels on. This thing is just about done. It's coming together, guys. Look at that. There it sits, guys. Check that out. This thing is like brand new almost. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check the servo out. Let's see here. Keep in mind, that's on 3S. Looks plenty strong enough. The speed is kind of resembles like a 777 from Reefs. <laughs> yes, it is the castle. Oh, man. That's that torque. That's the detent torque of that Holmes motor. This motor is no joke, guys. And for the final weigh-in, let's see here. 152 ounces, 9 pounds, 8.3 ounces. Now it's time to give it a drive. This drive is just for setting endpoints, you know, making sure the steering is straight. I don't even want to get the tires dirty, so I'm not taking it back there. Ooh, something big was there, huh? All right. Now we're in second gear. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to be 4S in this thing. Sure does sound a lot quieter than mine. A lot quieter. Very nice. And at this point, it's ready. Well, guys, there you go. Troy has an awesome, awesome riff right here. Let me tell you. Uh, I've done everything that I know to do to it, especially with that transmission. Every trick that I know of to getting that two-speed to work correctly, you guys just saw it. So hopefully, I'm probably going to deliver this personally to him. I mean, he doesn't even know I've got it done yet. <laughs> Anyway, guys, I will put links to all this Vitavon stuff, the Castle ESC. I'll see if I can find that Holmes motor, the Reese Servo, all that stuff I'll put down below. So, guys, make sure you check that out. There are affiliate links from Amain, eBay, Amazon, and Horizon. Uh, use those links. They help out the channel quite a bit when you guys do, and it means a lot. Thank you, guys. So, guys, check that description. Use those links. Make sure you're subscribed. And thank you all for watching. Guys, if you like what you see, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell. So, in the description, there's a link to become a channel member. If you want to become a channel member, it's a very simple $2, $5, $10, or if you really got some money, $25 a month. It's a simple way to support the channel. So, get that, and I am doing monthly giveaways for members only, so you might want to consider it. So, guys, use those links. Make sure you're subscribed. Thank you all for watching.